Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> welcome, Matthew and John. You're our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? Well, Matthew's my son. I've managed to get rid of him from home after 30 years. He's finally packed his bags. Oh, he's finally the... moved out? Yes, thank goodness. Oh, and now, no, he's still here. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, take, no. take a look to your right there, John. He uses, he uses <laughs> him for taxi work. He's yeah. finally... Oh, right, yeah. I see. Best of luck. And welcome to Susie and Sally. How do you two know each other? Uh, well, we're mother and daughter, um, so Sally has lived with us now for 24 years, and we're pretty much soulmates, I think. That's lovely. You're still at home, are you? Yes. Sally? Until I can find someone to take me away. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Dad's well... willing to pay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Best of luck <laughs> this afternoon. And welcome to Debs and Emma. How do you two know each other? We uh, grew up on the same street and have known each other for 33 years. And since we're only 34, that's really not bad. Oh, that's, that's, that's <laughs> it's fantastic. A beautiful thing. It is a beautiful <laughs> thing. Well, you just have to compound that by winning this afternoon, and uh, everything will be excellent. Finally, we've got Carly and Julie back. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances, of course, to get through to our pointless final, and today is your final chance. Remind us how you two know each other. Uh, I've known Julie all my life. She's my sister, and she lives two doors down, so there's no getting away from her. <laughs> it's a family show, isn't it? <laughs> A family show. Brilliant. Uh, well, we'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. Uh, meanwhile, though, I must introduce you to the man with all the facts and figures, the man with whom the buck surely stops. It is my pointless friend, Richard. As, as you know, at the start of every show, I like to predict who I think is going to make it through to the final. Yeah. Now, we've done 18 shows so far this series. How many of you and got I, right, Richard? Well, you know what, I genuinely try. I genuinely think, you know, people who've been on before, you know, been on the previous show. You I look, look at form. people's biogs, see what, you know, see what they know about. I genuinely try. Out of 18 shows, I've been right once, <laughs> OK? But statistically, a monkey with a pin would have been right four and a half times. <laughs> I've been right once. So today, I have uh, picked a name out of a hat. Is that how you've done it? it? Yeah, I did, yeah. To see if it, it works any better. And the good news, Susie and Sally. That's, what I think it's gonna get That's quite a lot of today. pressure, isn't okay. it, now? Do you want me to call a taxi now? I could. Yes. <laughs> Best of luck, despite Richard's backing. Uh, yeah, well, we've asked all our questions on pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, all our players need to do is score as few points as they can. And they do that by seeking out those little-known answers that as few of those 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's looking to try and do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave. And every time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, listen to this. The jackpot hasn't been won for the last five shows, so we add another £1,000 to that today. So the jackpot this afternoon starts off at £8,250. Look at that. Yeah, that's worth playing for, I think. Let's play Pointless. OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so you have to be very careful that's not you. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. <laughs> Telling us it is an incorrect answer and you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, without further ado, here is our first category this afternoon. Words. Words, Matthew. You don't think happy with yeah. that at all. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Okay, words. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in ump as they could. <laughs> Julie, <laughs> have you just thought of a funny one? <laughs> OK, well, we'll I, I, I dare say we'll find out. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any word in the Oxford English Dictionary that ends at U-M-P or ump. Uh, we're not looking for abbreviations or hyphenated words or proper nouns, uh, but any word in the English language that ends U-M-P. Uh, we won't accept the word ump itself, which is uh, short for umpire, apparently. But uh, we won't accept that, but anything else, uh, fill your boots. Right, Matthew and John, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. I think I'll try one, which I think is pretty safe. Gazump. Gazump. Very good. Gazump. You're hoping to score as few points as possible with this. Let's see how many of our 100 people said gazump. <laughs> 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 
nine. Okay. That scores you a pat on your back from your father. <laughs> And nine points. Very good. Gazump. Richard. Yeah, gazump. And if no one puts in a higher offer, that's worth nine points. <laughs> <laughs> it genuinely means just to generally swindle, but it's obviously it's come to mean a gazumping someone on a house price more recently. Very good. Susie. Mm, Alistair. <laughs> that's I'm... not a word ending with UMP, and that's not <laughs> my name. <laughs> I always get called Alistair. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm so is that, sorry. Is that your answer? <laughs> is it? <laughs> I'm warning it could be incorrect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be ready. I'm, I'm going to go with chump. OK, you're saying chump. Let's see how many people said that. <laughs> Not bad. Chump scores you 19. Richard? Yeah, very good. 19 points. Uh, chump can mean a, a thick piece of wood, can mean a, a foolish fellow, amongst uh, many other things. OK, on to Debs. Debs, words. Words, Debs. OK. Um, right. Going to take a risk, and I'm going to go for Crump. K-R-U-M-P. Uh, -P. Very good. Crump. American style of dance. Oh, we get it, we, she could give us a definition as well. Did you spot that? I did, yeah. Not just a potentially winning word. Definition. <laughs> <laughs> You're hoping to score as few points as possible with Crump. Let's see how many people said crump. Oh, I hope it's right. <laughs> oh, no! Oh. No! Oh. Unfortunately, crump appears to be an incorrect answer, so you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard, what's going on? Well, crunk is an American form of dance. I think that might be your... Uh, might be the issue. Crumping. Oh. It just hasn't made it into the dictionary yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, bad luck. That scores you 100 points, Debs. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't enjoy handing out 100 points at any stage. Carly. I think I'm going to go for stump. Stump. Yep. How many people said that? Well, stump scores you 32. Yes, stump uh, means much the same as chump, the end of something, or, you know, could pertain to a limb, but also a piece of wood. Very good, Carly. Not a bad answer. And a right answer. Yes. See, that's good. That is good. And you're, you're about a third of the high score there. Wonderful. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Matthew and John. Lovely low score there with nine. Well done, Matthew. Keep that up, then you'll be through to the next round. No bother. Debs and Emma at the other end of the field. <sighs> it was a brave and correct thing to do. It's what we encourage people to do. Let's hope that uh, Emma can, can find a really low scoring answer. OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> Julie, we are looking for words ending in ump. Words okay. ending in ump. The high scorers are Emma and Debs with 100 points. You want to score 67 or less with your answer. This might be quite high scoring, but I want to get a right answer, so I'm going to go for plump. Plump. Mm -hmm. You want to score 67 or less. There's the red line. Under that red line, and you are through. Let's see how many said plump. It's good enough. Wow. That's quite a low score. That scores you 12, taking your total up to 44. Plump, Richard? Yeah, 12 people, plump for plump. Uh, full rounded shape. It means all sorts of things, plump. Uh, but a very good answer. Very good. Now, Emma, you know what you've got to do here, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> and even if you do the best you can possibly do, it may not be enough. But we never know. You've got lots of words ending in... I um, have so many words. <laughs> that's good. Or is it? So many. What, the no, paralysis it's of the, choice. It's the picking one. Mm. Um, I'm going to go for about the third one that went into my head, because that's not too obvious, I hope, with okay. um, the word clump. You're going to say clump? Let's see how many people said clump. <laughs> that scores you 30. And that takes your total up to 130. Richard, clump. Yeah, compact mass, or to, to tread heavily. Clump. 
Well, the writing is on the wall, I'm afraid, for Debs and Emma. That's bad luck. You scored 30 there. Your total of 130 means you are now so far out in front that even if our remaining pairs score the maximum of 100, they can't overtake you. I'm sorry, Debs. <laughs> Do you want a hanky? Are you all right? I wouldn't mind one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there you are. <laughs> it's clean, fresh laundered. Oh. There you are. Do give I get it, to keep it? Yeah, um, <laughs> you, give, it, give it back at the end of the show. I'm feeling a bit sad. A little bit emotional. I tell you what, it's not the end of the world. Right. Sally and Susie, we are looking for words ending in um. Sally. Yes. You're through to the next round, whatever. So you have a free reign here. I mean, maybe you'll get a pointless answer with this. Who knows? Right. Um, sump. S-U-M-P. Sump. You are saying if it is pointless, it'll add £250 to our jackpot. Let's see how many people said sump. <laughs> ah. 48. <laughs> no, I didn't either. And that takes your total to 67. I thought sump would go a bit, bit lower than I that. Did. Never mind. Richard, it's a lot, sump. It? I know sump, it's a, it's a, it's a pit for collecting uh, water or fluid, but uh, that's very, very high scoring, isn't, isn't it? it? Who'd have thought it? Doesn't matter, you're through to the next round. Yeah. As are you, John. Lovely low score of nine. Glad the pressure's off. The pressure is off, but if you could eke out a, a mm. little pointless answer there... I, I mean, got... Matthew came in with a lovely low one with gazump. Yeah. I've got three in mind. Oh, three. So, so I'll probably go for the one I think's the least score. Hump. Hump. Yes. You're giving us the hump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see how many people said hump. <laughs> 74 gives you a total of 83. So that is the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, it's Debs and Emma. Bad luck, bad luck. And it was only because you, you crump, you see. You could have, that would have been a pointless answer if it had been right, I I'm sure. I risk. Yeah. Are you now thinking of lots of brilliant words ending in um? I had another one, but again, I didn't know whether it would work. Go on, tell us what it is, quickly. Um, it was mump. Just torture myself, what, but like I didn't know whether there was the a disease. singular. <laughs> well, like, just one cheek swells yes, up. Yes, just a singular <laughs> mump. I don't know what would have happened uh, with that one. I, so. I have an inkling we might have got another red cross <laughs> up there, but... Who knows? <laughs> I know absolutely nothing. Richard, I what know, answers yeah. should they have uh, given? Well, they should have given mump. Oh, so, no. Yeah, would have scored you 21 points. And you, Is it you, like in America in where maths becomes math? So in America yeah, exactly. they call mumps mump. Yeah, I've got the mump. I've got the mump. It actually means to, to cheat or to, or to put an exaggerated expression, to mump. Mm. But there were a whole series of pointless answers, an awful lot. Let's take a look at a few of them. Uh, but thump, which is to thump, mugwump. Uh, Parajump, which is uh, another word to, to parachute, to parajump. So you can look at a few more. I can't believe no one said hump and scrump, which is uh, it's a type of hurdy gurdy, an old, uh, very sort of rudimentary instrument. Uh, over Trump and under Trump, uh, all the bridge players out there will, uh, will have got. Uh, let's take a look at a few more. Scrump, any orchard owners out there will have got. Yump is, uh, is the action of a rally car when it crests a hill and does a little leap, is to, is to yump. That's nice. And stiff rump, but that's just my chair. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the worst answers you could have given. John, you might want to look away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there'll be, there's no big surprises here. In third, it was bump. Then it was lump, 73, and then hump, uh, the worst of all. Hump, lump, bump, which is the name of the new Black Eyed Peas album. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. OK, Debs and Emma, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless ump knowledge you needed to make it through to the next round. But remember, dry your eyes. Everyone gets two chances to reach our pointless final, so we will see you again next time for your last chance. But thank you so much for playing. You've been great contestants. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of our teams is going to be leaving this round disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. OK, our category for the second round is... History. Once again, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And having decided, can whoever's going first please step up to the podium? 
We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many wars involving Britain as they could. <sighs> Sally is shaking her head. Wars involving... So is Julie, if that's any consolation. <laughs> wars... And so is Matthew. There we are. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, wars involving Britain. Richard. Yeah, quite simple. This, uh, all the correct answers that you're about to see are wars involving Britain being a, being a combatant on one side or the other. OK, wars involving Britain. In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but you have to be very careful, because there is also at least one incorrect answer among the seven. Pick one of those and you will, of course, score the maximum of 100 points. OK, the first set of seven answers are... World War I, Chaco War, Napoleonic Wars, Six-Day War, Falklands War, War of Austrian Succession, Seven Years' War. OK, so we are looking for wars involving Britain. Matthew. Right, I think I'm going to play fairly safe here. OK. Go for Falklands War. Interesting use of the word fairly there. OK, <laughs> Falklands War. OK, let's see how many people said the Falklands War. That's not bad. That's not bad. Falklands War scores you 27 points, Richard. Uh, yeah, Falklands War from, from 1982, more commonly called the Falklands Conflict, but uh, it counts here. Very well done. Thanks very much. Now, remember, there is at least one pointless answer in there. Maybe you'll find it. And there is at least one incorrect answer, so try and avoid those. Sally. Mum is going to be good on this, so I think I can risk going for one that might be a little bit higher. OK. It's just... <laughs> Um, right, I'm going to have to play it really, Follow your hunch. Follow really, really hunch. safe and go for World War One because I just don't know okay. about any of the other Okay, World War One. Let's see how many of our 100 people said World War One. <laughs> 62, that's not too that's bad. Not too bad. <laughs> that's not too bad. It's better than 100. That scores you 62. 38 people didn't remember World War One, or didn't, or, or perhaps didn't think we were involved. Yeah. Slightly worrying. Um, <laughs> OK, we are looking for wars involving Britain. Wars involving Britain, Carly. Yeah, everything I would have went for has gone. <laughs> really? I don't think there would be a six-day war, although I could be wrong. <laughs> um, or a seven-year war. Or war of Austrian succession, not so sure. Would we be involved in that? <laughs> Um, oh, might as well. We'll go for broke. War of Austrian Succession. The War of <laughs> Austrian Succession. I like your logic there, because <laughs> it looks like an obvious wrong answer. Yes, probably is. Maybe it is an obvious <laughs> wrong answer, or maybe it's a brilliant pointless answer. <laughs> this deserves to be pointless. Let's see if it is a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. The War of Austrian Succession. It's correct. Yeah, I reckon this is going to go all the way. <laughs> Carly, well done. That's a pointless, and it adds two hundred and fifty pounds to today's jackpot, taking the total up to eight thousand five hundred pounds. <laughs> Richard. Well, that's the way to play the game. You take a risk, a calculated risk, and it, and it pays off. Yeah, the War of uh, Austrian Secession, the 1740s, a sort of series of wars, really, involving most of Europe. Richard, what were the other... What were, how are the other answers Yeah, let's there? take a little look. Um, there was indeed a, a, a six-day war, but uh, it didn't involve us. It was uh, Israel against, uh, essentially, sort of Egypt, Jordan and Syria. That would have been a wrong answer. Uh, Chaco War was also a wrong answer. That was a, a war in the, in the 1930s between Bolivia and Paraguay. Uh, they got on a lot better now. Uh, the Napoleonic Wars, of course, uh, was a series of, uh, of wars against uh, Napoleon's France. Uh, and the Seven Years' War we were involved with. That was us and, and the Prussians and the Hanoverians against lots of countries, including Sweden. OK, uh, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. Well, now... There it all is. Susie and Sally, that's quite a high price you paid for an obvious answer. No, it's all right. 
As you said, Susie might be better on the second pass, so she might redeem. She might not. <laughs> she might not, but she might. She might. Um, at the other end of the scale, Carly and Julie, fantastic. The pointless answer there, so you are on nothing. OK, well, let's come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for wars involving Britain, and here they are. The Snake War, World War II, the Hunger War, the War of Jenkins' Ear, Boer Wars, American Revolution, Opium Wars. Julie. Again, I can tell you that there is at least one pointless answer there, and there is at least one incorrect answer as well. OK. So try and avoid those incorrect answers. I'm just guessing because I've sort of heard of this. There's one I could go for, but it's a risk. It's not worth it because she has zero. Um, I'm going to go for Boer Wars. OK, the Boer War. Yeah. OK, here's your red line. Below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see how many people said the Boer War. It's good enough. <laughs> that scores you 20, Julie, taking your total up to 20. Richard? Uh, yeah, 1899 to 1902, Britain and, uh, well, the, the, the Boer Republics, the Afrikaner Republics. And it's seen you safely through. Well done. Now, remember, there is at least one pointless answer still in there, Susie, and at least one incorrect answer. You are the high scorers on 62. So you're going to have to answer quite carefully here. Mm. See if you can find a pointless answer and add £250 to our jackpot and maybe save your bacon in the process. Um... Is this quite a strong subject for you, history? Ish. 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 Yes. But having looking, you know, a look at some of those, I'm beginning to think it's not quite as strong as I thought it was. I'm going to go with the American Revolution. OK, you're going to go with American Revolution. You want this to score as low as it possibly can for you. Otherwise, we will say goodbye to you at the end of this round. <sighs> Let's see how many people said the American Revolution. Well, it's right. Still going down. Not bad. Four. That scores you four, taking your total up to 66. Richard? Uh, yes, yeah, 1775 to 1783, and, of course, led to the, uh, the setting up of the United States of America. Very good. Not a bad answer at all. Now then, John. John, John, John. Are you feeling you're on comfortable ground here? No, not now. Oh, really? <laughs> but, look, they've, they've been kind enough to take two answers off the board for you. Look at that. You've got five things to choose from, yeah, those are the and there that... is at least one pointless answer in there. Yeah. There's also at least one incorrect answer in yeah. there. Well, I was going to go off either Boer War or American Revolution. Yeah. World War II is too obvious. Mm hmm So I'm going to go for the War of Jenkins' Ear. Well done, you. The War of Jenkins' Ear. Well, there is your red line. If you come below that red line, you are through to the next round. If you are above that red line, and honestly, I think the only way you'll be above it is, is an incorrect answer then uh, we'll be saying goodbye to you. OK, let's see how many people said the war of Jenkins' ear, and if it is a correct answer. It's correct. I think that's probably all we needed to know. Yep, you are through. Oh! <laughs> very, very good answer. That scores you one and takes your total up to 28. Richard? Yeah, in, in 1739, Captain Robert Jenkins had his ear cut off by Spanish coast guards in the, in the West Indies, and uh, we went to war with the Spanish because of it. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the other answers. Uh, world War II, as you say, it's, uh, it's an obvious answer. They still would have only scored you 59 points. That's There's very four, 41 people out there thinking, <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was, was it Paraguay, Bolivia, World War II? <laughs> 59, that would have got you. Uh, there are two wrong answers there, and there's one pointless answer there. Alexander, what do you think the pointless answer is? Well, the opium wars is? I know we were involved in. Well, that's taken all the tension out of the occasion. <laughs> yeah, opium wars, that was a pointless answer. That was a trading war, really, with, with the Chinese uh, in, the, in the 19th century. The hunger war uh, was an incorrect answer. 
and the snake war, which was between American settlers and Native American Indians, that would also have been incorrect, would have got 100 points. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score. I'm sorry to say it's Susie and Sally. Bad luck. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Susie, what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. Do you teach history? No, I don't. No. Well, I teach... You're retired. I'm a retired teacher now, and I'm, I'm just going and do some part-time work. But I used to teach everything on the curriculum because it was a primary school, so... Things. Snake Wars and the Chaco War and all these things just didn't that sneak hasn't onto the syllabus. That primary curriculum no, I'm, I'm, yet. I, it, no. it just it would confuse them. It would confuse them. <laughs> well, sadly, you just didn't have that pointless knowledge you needed to get through to the head-to-head. -head. But uh, we have to say goodbye, but you will be back next time. You've been fantastic contestants. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so, well done, Carly and Julie, Matthew and John. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which, in case you'd forgotten, currently stands at £8,500. <laughs> Massive jackpot. Now, you're going head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Is that clear? Yes. Good. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many films written by Richard Curtis as they could. Julie loves that question. Uh, Richard. Uh, yeah, uh, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which Richard Curtis has a writing credit. There are nine films on this list. See how many you can get while our pairs here are conferring. Thanks very much. Um, Carly and Julie, because you've played the best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. Oh, dear, Julie, it's not looking good. It's not, sure it's not. It's not looking good. Yeah, well, then just pick one. Let's carry Richard. No, he's directed it. All right. Do you want to give him a little bit? Sexy Beast? Yeah. We'll go okay. for that. Go yeah. for it. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we total star in the dark. We're going to go for Sexy Beast. Oh, brilliant film. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> right. film. Who wrote it? <laughs> well, let's hope Richard Curtis wrote it. <laughs> um, Matthew and John. The only film I can think of is Four Weddings and a Funeral. OK. If that's the only one... That's what we got. That's the only that's one That's going to be the of. one you're going to give me. Does that give you any clues, Carly and Julie? Yeah. We said that in our conference, but didn't Did go you? with it, yeah. Well, you went with, a, you went with Sexy Bees, which is a fantastic okay. film. Notting Hill. Is... Oh, no. Oh, well. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sexy Beast. And if it's a correct answer. Oh. <laughs> we knew that. Yeah. OK. And Matthew and John have said four weddings and a funeral. At this stage, it merely has to be a correct answer for you to win this question. Let's see if it is a correct answer and how many of our 100 people said it. There we are. Oh. It's quite low. Surprisingly low. <laughs> so that's 23 versus an incorrect Answer after the first question, Matthew and John, it's 1-0 to you. Richard? Yes, yeah, Sexy Beast is not one of Richard Curtis's knockabout romantic comedies, <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, Carly, I just heard you say Notting Hill. Yeah. If you said that, you would have just, uh, just won. Let's take a look at all nine of them. There'll, there'll be, towards the top of the list, there'll be some films you're familiar with. Uh, Mr Bean's Holiday, he did uh, all of the Mr Bean movies. Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason, he wrote. Uh, the Tall Guys, one of his first ones with uh, Jeff Goldblum and Emma Thompson. Bridget Jones' Diary, Bean, uh, let's have a look at the top four. The Boat That Rocked was uh, his 2009 film. Love Actually, Hugh Grant, Martin McCutcheon, etc. Then Notting Hill with 20 and Four Weddings and a Funeral with 23. Well done if you've got all of those at home. OK, so after the first question, it is 1-0 to Matthew and John. Right, here's your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... U.S. states beginning with M, as they could. U.S. states beginning with M. Richard? Yeah, quite simple, this one. Uh, any of the 50 states of America uh, which begin with the letter M, there are eight possible answers, eight U.S. states beginning with M. Hmm. 
OK, this time it is Matthew and John's turn to go first. Yeah, Going from Maryland. Maryland. OK. Carly and Julie. OK, we've got Michigan, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I've got to think of one that's going to be the least. Minnesota. We'll go for Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. a good answer. OK, Matthew and John, you have said Maryland. Let's see how many people said Maryland. <laughs> 17. A good answer. Carly and Julie have said Minnesota. Let's see how many people said Minnesota. Thirty-one. Interesting. OK, so after the second question, it is 2-0 to Matthew and John. Richard? Yeah, Maryland was unbeatable, I'm afraid. It's the best answer you could have given. Minnesota was the second best answer you could have given, so uh, <laughs> a perfect round. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at all eight in order. We'll see Maryland at the bottom, then Minnesota with 31, Montana 32, Maine 32, uh, Mississippi, Massachusetts and Missouri all scoring 40. And top of the list, 47. Those are the eight states beginning with M. OK, we are now 2-0. Carly and Judy, you've got to win this one. Otherwise, Matthew and John are straight through to the final. Here is that third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many children of Madonna as they could. Children of Madonna, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the four children for whom Madonna is legal guardian or has joint guardianship. There are four answers. OK, thanks, Richard, Carly and Julie. It's your turn to answer first. We're looking for children of Madonna. I know plenty of Madonna tries, <laughs> but not so much for their children. I, I, is it Rocco even the name of one of her kids? Rocco. You're mm -hmm. going to say Rocco? Yeah. OK, it's... we'll take Rocco. Yeah. Matthew and John. <laughs> We're looking for a child of Madonna. Well, I don't know the adopted names of... The adopted one, so I think it's Lords. Lords. Yeah. Okay, let's go with Carly and Julie's answer, Rocco, first, and see how many people said Rocco. <laughs> Nineteen. <laughs> you pleased with that score? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You confident? No. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, Lords. Is Matthew and John's answer. Let's see how many people said Lords. <laughs> 39. <laughs> so after the third question, it is 2 1 to Matthew and John. 2 1. Richard. Yeah, Rocco is a good answer. It's uh, Madonna's son with Guy Ritchie. There was one answer which could have beaten it, which was Mercy, which is the most recent of the Malawian orphans she's adopted. Let's take a look at all four. We'll see Mercy there, then Rocco. David uh, was, of course, another of the Malawian orphans. And Lourdes, which is her daughter with Carlos Leon, with 39 points. Yes, they sometimes pronounce that Lourdes, don't yeah. they? Lourdes, yeah. Lourdes. Presumably so as not to confuse it with the cricket ground. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get people, because every time they go, where's Lourdes? Where's they go, Lourdes? Goes, well, St. St. John's, John's Wood. Wood. <laughs> and they go, no, no sorry, Lourdes. Yeah. Oh, oh, she's upstairs. She's, she's upstairs in the nursery. <laughs> OK, so it is 2-1 after our third question. Fourth question, again, if Matthew and John win this, they are straight through for that big money final. Here is the fourth question, Carly and Julie. Pay attention. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British Champions League winners as they could. British Champions League winners. Yeah, we're looking for any British team that's won the Champions League or its precursor, which was the, the European Cup, the European Champions Cup. Since 1955, five British teams have won the Champions League or the European Cup. OK, thanks, Richard. Yeah, this time it is Matthew and John's yeah. turn to answer first. Yeah. Aston Villa. Aston Villa. You say that with a bit of confidence there. 1981. You give a date with a bit of confidence <laughs> there. 
Carly and Julie. We've got Aston Villa. That one's gone. We're not sure if this is the right competition we're thinking of, right? OK. Um, but we're going to... We're going to go for Notts Forest. OK, Nottingham Forest, you're yeah. saying? Yeah. OK, two good answers there. Matthew and John. Aston Villa, you say. Let's see if it's a correct answer and how many people said Aston Villa. It's good. <laughs> 17. You feeling confident? No, I think we've got the wrong answer. You have to get this <laughs> to stay in the game. You've got to hope Nottingham Forest is a correct answer <laughs> and that it'll do it for you. Otherwise, we say goodbye to you at the end of this round. You have said Nottingham Forest. Let's see how many people said Nottingham Forest. It's correct. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> oh. Bad luck. It's just not quite as obscure as Aston Villa, according yeah. to our 100 people. So, after the fourth question, it is 3-1 to Matthew and John, and they go through to the final, Richard. Yeah, again, we've got two brilliant pairs here, because, again, those are the best two answers we, we possibly could have had. Uh, Notts Forest won in 1979 and 1980. Aston Villa did win. It didn't win in 81, <laughs> but they did win in... They, they won in 82. <laughs> Liverpool won in 81, <laughs> but uh, like you care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at all the answers. I'm sure there's plenty of people at home who, who will have got all five of these especially being prompted with Villa and Forest. Aston Villa, 17. Forest, 20. That's a high-scoring thriller. Uh, Celtic, 24. <laughs> Liverpool with 77. And uh, Man United have won it three times with 80. Any Liverpool fan will tell you. They won it less recently, but they won it five times. Thanks very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Carly and Julie. Was that really a shot in the dark, Nottingham Forest, or...? It sort of was, but we've been doing some studying on like more sports <laughs> questions because we're not as good at those. Like, so we had that, but they beat us anyhow. We wouldn't have got Aston Villa, so that's fair enough. Were they winners? Well, you've done very well indeed. You went out in the second round last time, I think. Yeah. This time you've done so well. Really good answers there, and you've come all the way to the head to head. Um, mm. It could all have fallen right. It was the sexy beast, let us down. Sexy beast <laughs> let you down. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But anyway, you've been fantastic contestants. Yeah. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but for Matthew and John, it's now time for our pointless final. <laughs> so congratulations, Matthew and John. Well done. You've beaten off the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> And now, you get a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, in case you'd forgotten, the jackpot stands at an impressive £8,500. <laughs> OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's one of the answers that nobody could think of. We've had one pointless answer on the show today. You just need to find another one now. But first, you've got to choose a category, and here are your three options. You can go for... Asterix... American football or Brit pop? Asterix, American football or Brit pop? Well, Asterix, a girl, um, nah. if it's that, I'm good. So Asterix is <coughs> out. I think so. OK. Brit pop, it just depends what era. I'm probably OK at the more modern stuff. I'm OK on the older stuff. Ooh, good. American football. You used to... to be interested. American football. Yeah, we'll go for it. American, American football. football. American football. OK, good luck. Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many NFL teams as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any of the American football teams who played in the 2009 NFL season. There are 32 of them. We are only looking for the team names. We don't need the city. So, for example, if we were doing basketball, we would just want the Knicks rather than the New York Knicks. So just the team name of any of those 32 American football teams in the NFL. <sighs> OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £8,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Yeah, there's a lot of new ones, isn't there? So, Cleveland Browns, 
jets. No, Too obvious. Round. <clears throat> Steelers. Too obvious. Colt. What about Colt? Yeah. Redskins, 49ers, too obvious. Brown Colt. Brown Colt. Vikings. 30 Gun. seconds. Yeah. I keep, I keep yeah. thinking. No, no. Vikings, they have to be one. Rams, no. Too obvious. Raiders. Go. Too obvious. What's the name of the new cities that have got them? No idea. Tallahassee. Name some. OK, that is time up. We were looking for NFL teams, and I need your three answers now. Yeah. Browns. Browns. Colts. Colts. Vikings. Vikings. OK, of those three, which one do you have the most faith in being a pointless answer? Browns. 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 We'll put that one last, then. Browns last. Which one do you have the least faith in being pointless? Vikings. Vikings. So we'll go Vikings, Colts and Browns. There they are. We were looking for NFL teams. This first answer was your least confident answer. You only need to find one pointless in those three. Only one of them has to be pointless for you to win that £8,500 jackpot. £8,500, that's a lot of money. It's a massive jackpot. What would you do with eight and a half grand? Go on a cruise. A cruise. The 40th wedding anniversary this year. So. Very good. Matthew, would you...? My girlfriend would probably spend it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. There's your first answer, Vikings. We've got to hope nobody said Vikings out of our 100 people for you to win that jackpot. Let's see what they said. How many people said Vikings? This is for £8,500. Well, it's looking good. Down it goes. Come on. Come Down on. it goes, Vikings. Well done. Thank you. Very well done indeed. Whoa. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you managed to find that all important pointless answer with your first answer, which means you go home with a jackpot of £8,500. <laughs> first time I've won anything. <laughs> really? Well, it, when it really counts. Look at that. Very good luck, charm. Fabulous. But you remembered everything you needed to remember. We did. Everything you needed. This was the one you had the least faith in. I mean, yeah. God, I can't wait to hear what Colts and Browns did. <laughs> uh, Richard. Uh, yeah, very well done, guys. Minnesota Vikings, they've been around since 1961, but they were still a pointless answer. Uh, your other two answers, uh, the Cleveland Browns and the Indianapolis Colts, would both have scored three points. Ooh. Fantastic. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Matthew and John, who go away with today's jackpot of £8,500. <laughs> Join us next time when we put more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>